All right. Yeah, it looks like we are live. Great. So, I am going to be doing this stream for the purposes of myself keeping some solid evidence of what the hell am I doing and how. So right now it's 1.24 a.m. on Friday night. I was supposed to be doing an assignment during the whole week until this moment, but I haven't done. As usually students do, we, uh, we contemplate and we are lazy and we just genuinely don't want to do assignments at home, which is fine. But either way, I got the assignment. We are taking one and a half hours to arrange Le Cloche by Claude Debussy. And that has to be arranged for a wind quartet. Let's take a look at that piece. For those who are watching this video later in the future, after I've done this, and they just are watching for something, then uh, remember. You s when you open the file up, once he sends it in, you're gonna see the romance first. Just scroll down, you're gonna see the cloche. You have two pieces there, two romances. You need the second romance. So, let's take a look. So it's for voice. Uh, Andantino quasi allegretto. Okay, alright. And a piano. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out how many voices you have. How many voices does Claude actually give you? So in uh, Debussy technically gives you three voices. And also, d uh, don't forget that uh, we're doing this assignment until the pupil mark. So at this point, the music stops. Well, technically here, the music is gonna stop. Technically here, here we're gonna draw the line. This is this is our stop line. Okay. So we got the piece. We have something to look at. Let's put it on once and then uh, we're gonna open up Sibelius. Click. We're definitely gonna continue the trial. We are never done with the trial. terrible. Let's take a look. We need a wind quartet, am I right? Let's take a look. Wind quartet. Flute, oboe, clarinet, and B-flat in the bus. Flute, so oboe, clarinet, B-flat. The stream so broke apart. That's fine, we're gonna pick up from here. So we're gonna write down our composer. We're gonna do all the, all the general score stuff. Uh, our instruments. Oh. Let's check our instruments, what's going on? Ah. Okay, everything is alright. Everything is alright, except for the score, which looks like a concert score. That's fine. Okay, let's... Uh, so we have Claude Debussy, lyricist. Who was the lyricist? Paul Bourget. Okay. Did I read that? Did I type it in correctly? Yeah, well, who cares? Anyways, copyrights, obviously. We don't need a title page. And ranged by because reasons. So, show quick start and spell it starts. Uh, yes. No. So, everything looks fine, this looks fine, oh, tempo text, yeah, that would be nice, let's check the tempo text. Dantino quasi allegretto. Is there a mention on Mark mentioned? Let's uh, write the uh, mark 100 per beat. 
we don't have an upbeat bar. No, we don't. Good, so once we have checked all of that, the basic setup of the piece should be just uh, fine. We don't have many bars that we should do. Okay. Boom. Score has been created. And now we can immediately start customizing customizing our setup. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna click on the panorama view. Panorama view is very nice. We like panorama view. Let's put it like this so that we can actually switch windows. This there and this here. So that here we can see how the piece looks like on the left part. And we can start actually inputting notes. And as a matter of fact, you can press the input notes button and you're immediately starting to input stuff. But first we need to think a little bit about... Um, okay, so this is all in concert pitch. Input pitches, yeah, sounding written. So if you if you if you look at the view, what was it uh, concert score or not concert score? Here you ha here you can have uh, plenty of stuff. Text play layout. Magnetic layout, nice. Uh, appearance, grabbing rules, scope design. Yeah, I don't remember. Ah, transposing score. So there. If you click transposing score, then you can see the the, the clarinet, uh, the way it's supposed to be transposing. If you unclick transposing score, so that it's just great, then. You don't have any problems. Let's continue. Um, so let's remember what are our instruments. I have no idea how. So flute, oboe, clarinet, and bassoon. So bassoon, we would like to use in a relatively. We have to figure out uh, how are we going. How are we going? We can just can just write. Okay, let's try. And then we can stop notating, and then we can see one, two, three, four, five. So what's gonna be a stronger instrument? We're gonna who am, who are we gonna give the melody roll? The melody roll is gonna go to clarinet because the pitch is because clarinet has the most annoying sound. So let's give the the the, the this fancy line to the flute. And uh, so how are we going to do this? We're going to do it like uh, that. We're going to introduce uh, one uh, rest. Boom. I'm going to stop introducing. Oh, shit. I'm going to... Same thing for six bars. All right. Press N. Stop notating. We can we can even slur the things. 
hold shift so that you can select multiple nodes. Click on the first, hold shift, click on the last. Oh, this is not nice. Control Z. We need to slur. How do we slur? Let's take a look. There's a tie, but we need a slur. So we go notations, slur, boom. And we can select first, last, hold shift, slur. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a stupid thing. I see that this F sharp can go to this F sharp. Because I'm planning to introduce new material on the on the third and fourth eighth note for the for the clarinet. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna control C, control V, boom, 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 and boom. Just double check. There. Last bar had this. Oh, even. Okay, all right. We, we got some stuff going on already. We can even listen to to this terrible. Let's go home. Uh, no, play. Select play. Okay, we get the idea. All right. So far, it's not playing that bad. Now let's introduce. Let's introduce a little bit of um, rest into. Actually, we need quarter rest here. And then. Okay. Wait, what a, what the hell? Is that a clarinet? Is is that how a clarinet sounds now? Wow. Terrible. But okay. Either way, I'm gonna introduce another yeah rest, and then I'm gonna. Because this thing is circulating all around, I want uh, I want this line also to to go from from the stable base to unstable base. So it goes from the base chord. So imagine you have uh, the first, yeah, the, 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 not the triplet, how do you call it? The 5-3 chord, and you want it to go to 6-3 chord. Yeah, all right. So now we stop notating. I said we. Oh, it doesn't want to stop noting. Now you can, now you do. Ah, we're gonna put some slurs. All right, I'm gonna put a couple. And you can press S, and it will slur two notes together. That's another tip for you, young players. Boom. Grab, 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 grab. And in this bar, there's going to be a little bit of a change. Because here, we're introducing, uh, this is the fourth. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So it's uh, so it's a subdominant chord. So here we're going to introduce deviation to subdominant because after that, that deviation is going back into the first sixth chord. So how are we going to? So first we're going to obviously notate the bass, and the bass. From the bass, we're going to introduce we're going to introduce this here. Then we're going to introduce a half rest here. Yeah. Why you do this? No. Yes, there we go. Introduce half rest here. And then I'm gonna stop notating. Introduce this here. Alright. So let's listen to how does it sound now? this selection all right so far the woodwinds have room to breathe except for the poor bassoon. The bassoon has now... So we're gonna do each second bar, I'm gonna introduce a rest. Boom. And then we're gonna grab these and slur... and then slur like this. Learning like this allows fluent transition of music from one point to another. There's, it's just phrasing slur. It's just a phrasing slur. Oh boy, come on. Right, now we can start introducing the melody. Let's introduce the melody. The melody starts on the third bar. Here's our third bar. Then we're going to... There we go. And then we have a triplet. We go notations, I think, was it? No, note input, triplets. Eh, no, wrong, wrong. Control Z, cancel. And we go the first note of our group and then we introduce a triplet. Use arrow buttons. Then we introduce, and this is where the tie comes in. There you can press enter on the numpad. Boom. Then Sibelius will automatically understand that this is supposed to be just a prolongation, because. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, here we have 
these eights written out separately for the sake of voice. This is for this is for the syllable separation for the voice. So it's easier to read for the singers. We don't need to do that. We can just use normal and then we can introduce a uh, for this bar we can introduce a diminuendo boom which is gonna work totally maybe I don't know okay let's try to play it now from the beginning Okay, we can adjust the dynamics. That's not too bad. So we can, I think we can, yeah, we can double click. And this, this, this. And then we can input. Uh, ah, all right. We need some sort of. expression for all of them and the expression for them if we right click we can get a list and that should be piano and the same is here right click expression piano Select, right click, expression, piano. Select this, no, select this bar, right click, eh. expression, mezzo forte. And the leger portion has to go to our right hand, which is our uh, clarinet and flute. it here when you press ctrl v just uh, your mouse cursor will turn blue you use that to click on the space where you want to enter your expression it's piano across it's piano across all three voices here but that doesn't make sense uh, dynamics wise uh, for the for the quartet let's try out how it sounds now we, what we just did is basically dynamics course with Sibelius standard instruments it sounds like total crap and the thing is now okay we have introduced a stop in here but starting with here we already want to make an upbeat to the next phrase so this we're going to shorten and we're going to use this to note it We're not. We're not even gonna do. Huh. How are we gonna do? We have four more bars to go. Four more bars. Let's come on. Let's do this. Yeah. How 
how are we going to do? We need to introduce an upbeat. The flute I intended to go up so that what well then let's 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 do easiest thing first. Introduce a rest here. We can, uh, can totally copy paste that. Then let's copy paste that bar. And the third bar, we need to sharpen this thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here we are only introducing. Uh, okay. Notation. This. Boom. Press backspace, it creates a rest instead of the note. Okay, let's let's harmonize the chord until the end. Because we can at least put a double stop. Let's just hope that the ch -ch -ch notations. I want to input the bar line, final bar line after this bar. Excellent. So now we can go to our page view, grab all the bars until the double bar line. Press delete, press delete again, nothing happens, press shift and then backspace, and then again nothing happens, and even shift delete doesn't help me here, terrible, terrible. I delete these bars? Hmm. That's interesting. How can we delete the bars? Ah, maybe if we delete this, we just grab the bars till here. And then we delete them. This doesn't delete the bars. Hmm. Find and write. Delete bars. Yes, I definitely want to delete these bars from score. Oh, that works like... Okay, so. I didn't know how to use a feature, so... I use... And apparently it's on home. Alright. That's not too bad. Okay, now we need to input some notes here. And those notes... No, that's not how we're gonna do this. We're gonna turn this. Oh, that didn't work. We select this and we turn it into this. Let's just here from here. Boom. That works. Uh, now we need to use 
this harmonic spectrum that Debussy has given us, we need to apply this to our quartet. We don't want to lose material. If we have too little material, we can add some for the sake of the ensemble sounding not planned. But if the original composer already gives us plenty of material to just use for our arrangement, why shouldn't we use it? So let's figure out. So we have... Uh, what kind of chords do we have here? We have sixth chord of the first and then we have sixth chord of the second and not only sixth chord of second after that it goes to i think it's again the sixth chord just so that it goes into just so that it goes into circle yeah reminds me of schubert's uh, Can I put this bar? Oh boy. Eh, let's put it to the beginning. Huh. This. I should have done this. Okay. Anyway, we are notating. Actually, now we're going to give the voice to the clarinet. First thing we're gonna do is introduce a rest. but tie all right and we need to switch dynamics obviously and the harmonization is gonna Put it like this. Then harmonization. Of Let's put some slurs just so that it looks beautiful. Got to slur the melody, but I can do that a bit later. I'm doing things by thing. So here I'm going to introduce mezzo forte for an expression. While this thing goes to piano. Oh, no, 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 my friend. We're done here. I'm introducing expression there. 
Lick. Yeah, no. Now we need to put... Uh, and this we need to split tie and introduce an oh come on boom this we turn into an F and uh, stop notating and we tie it together Copy and paste what we have done. Two bars, I think, the bassoon can survive. So now what do we do? Aha, uh -huh, now we put the Hobo in an in a very very annoying state. Very annoying state. Oh yes. In fact, I'm not even going to write notes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four bars, copy them, select this bar, paste. And then I'm going to... And this is too low. So I'm going to select. Is Oboe really that bad? So let's take a look. How can we do this? You know what? I don't really think that Oboe can't play that. I think that Oboe can play this. It's just that uh, English horn would be much better at this. I seriously do think that... Uh, can you show me what instruments am I playing? Let's actually take a look at the parts. Anyway, uh, let's listen to our new greatest creation from here on. Oh boy, this is gonna be amazing. And obviously we forgot this. One more time.
And we're going to change this. This thing belongs here. Click. So. And then. Uh, oh. Life tempo calibration. No, that's not what I want. What I want is the mixer. And I want the mixer to be arranged like so. like this now let's see what happens if we play the whole thing Oh, that looks like hot damn. I'm actually pretty happy with this. I can take this out. And I can create this. Okay, now let's start slurring up the melody just the way it was intended to be slurred. extend the slurp past so that we know that there's something going on and it's going to be open. Okay, now let's try one more time. This selection, everything at the beginning. Okay, harmonization is not absolutely broken, and uh, now we can introduce Yeah, we're not going to introduce many more dynamics, but what we are going to introduce is this is going to be mezzo forte still uh, Mixer can go away Go away, mixer. Click. I am right clicking here. Click. Let's do mezzo forte. Okay. So, what I did to make this whole ensemble sound a little bit better is I opened up the mixer and I set the instruments in such a way that it creates a more or less a balance. I can actually. Oh, yeah. It's a good idea, actually. I can introduce 
an effect. Plugin effects. Oh, I don't have any. There's even a click track here. Why would I need a click track? Wind. No, it's like staff. Whatever. Mixer. GFY. So we have a mixer, we have basically everything except for the ritardando. So we put the ritardando over here. And uh, we can go notations. Text only ritanuto. So that's good so far. Here we have a crescendo. And the crescendo goes until this climax point. All right. So we introduce a crescendo. Can I see everything? Okay, so it's a common crescendo of this, but I don't want to introduce this big thing. I just want to write crescendo. Really? You can't just write crescendo in? That's all you have? here mm -hmm. let's see can I find crescendo yes Okay, um, lines, crescendo for no, that doesn't, no, I don't like this, I like crescendo text, styles, let's see, ah, well, okay then. And let's just use this kind of uh, first poco and then crescendo. Preferably, yes. And then here we're gonna introduce a hairpin. Okay, until here, hairpin. just means play. So I'm introducing a piano here. Okay, this looks a bit too tense and we need to free up the score a little bit so that everybody can see their dynamics. Just a little bit more space between the stuff. All right. I mean, it takes two, two A4 pages, but I don't really care because, I mean, as a matter of fact, I could just print it out. 
but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is save the whole thing. Arrangement S1 Liklush dot zip. Yes. Boom. We have saved our score. Let's listen to our creation once more just to make sure that we know exactly what we're doing. Let's put this to the beginning. Since the music is coming to a stop, we're going to put it like this. We're not going to do this whole thing. Alright, save the file, and we're done here. Big thank you to everybody that has been watching this uh, video, live stream call it whatever you want we have spent a little bit less than an hour and this is our first assignment for arrangement for Utrecht Conservatory it's not too bad the score has a little bit of sense of humor the score has dynamics it's a four voiced arrangement we can even make the parts printable and playable the parts are actually playable people can breathe people understand where the lines are going and uh, and uh, and the lines are actually accustomed to like you know in a in a, in a I mean uh, I mean the oboe in this register sounds sounds more relaxing more soothing even though I hate the sound of oboe it's just annoying like like meh. And especially here in Siberius as well. But at least in this register, the oboe is going to sound nicely. And then now we have a little bit more com locomotion going on. And then we can put this locomotion into the clarinet in that. Well, I mean, it's a uh, upper middle register. Because in the high register, the, oboe, uh, the clarinet is just wow. It just kicks everything. But in this in this register, it's still mild but it already sounds a little bit trembling so it creates just the just the just the right feeling for the for the song so in that way our arrangement actually sounds more like the music that the composer intended you can disagree and just say that i'm a piece of shit but I think this is a this is a nice arrangement, and it's not too bad. So if you if you if you at least achieve this, then uh, your first uh, you're go you're gonna go well. I'm go I'm pretty sure of that. So thank you a lot for watching, and I will see you on the next video where we're gonna do another assignment, assignment number two. Ciao.